We turn now to Colossians and chapter 1, verse 15. Referring to Jesus Christ, Paul says, He is the exact likeness of the invisible God, the head or the firstborn of all creation. And we saw that this meant what is further described, it's the amplification of that in verse 16, that in him, when Jesus is called the firstborn of all creation, what that means is, verse 16, in him all things were created. And things in heaven, things in earth, visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, rulers, authorities, that is the angels and the archangels and all spirit rulers, all things have been created in him, through him, and for him. And he has existed prior to all these things. Verse 17. Jesus Christ existed prior to every created thing and every created being. And it is in Christ that all things hold together. That is, they unite and hold together as one harmonious whole in Christ. So we see that Jesus Christ is described here as the creator and sustainer of this universe, of things visible and of things invisible. That refers to all human beings and it refers to all spirit beings as well. Every throne, dominion, ruler and authority in this universe has been created by Jesus Christ. And in this sense he is called the firstborn or the head of of all creation. Now the reason why Paul uses the word firstborn in relation to creation will become clearer when we come to verse 18. In verse 18 Jesus is called the head of the body, the church. He himself is not one who has to be redeemed like we are in order to be a part of the church. He is the head. It is because of him that the church came into existence. He is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. There we find the same phrase being used. The firstborn from the dead. In other words, the first person to be born out from death. We know that Lazarus was raised from the dead. And the widow's son was raised from the dead. Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. We read that Elijah and Elisha raised people from the dead in the Old Testament. But no one was born out from the dead into an existence from which he could never die again. Because those whom Elijah and Elisha raised from the dead died again. So did Lazarus and all the others whom Jesus raised from the dead. They died again. But we read that Jesus, his resurrection was different. He was born out from the dead into an existence from, from which he could never die again. And that's why he's called the firstborn from the dead. And therefore, in verse 15, he's called the firstborn of all creation. Verse 18, the firstborn from the dead. We could put it like this, like J.B. Phillips paraphrases it in his paraphrase of the Colossian letter. Life from nothing began through Christ through Jesus Christ, and life from the dead also began through Jesus Christ. Two things. First of all, way back when life was created from nothing, that was through Jesus Christ. And then when sin came into the world and death as a result of sin, life from the dead also came through Jesus Christ. So in both these areas, Jesus Christ stands as the firstborn, the one who is the head. Life from nothing and life from the dead. He is the origin of life, and he is the first to return from the dead into a life in which death has no power. This is the meaning of the firstborn of creation, the beginning, and the firstborn from the dead, verse 18, so that in everything he might have first place. This is God's desire for his Son, that in all things Jesus Christ, the Son of God, may stand first in creation and in the resurrection. 
He has the first place. He is the one who created all things, and he is the one who became the resurrection from the dead. He said, I am the resurrection. He is the resurrection himself. Therefore, he is justly called the Lord of all. In all things, he alone is to be supreme. We can see that God's desire is clearly described in verse 18, that in everything God desires that Jesus Christ might have the first place. And if that is our desire too, we'll find that God's power is available to support us completely. If in your life you desire that Jesus Christ might have the first place in everything, well, then your desire is exactly the same as God's desire, and you can be sure of God's support in everything you do. In the same way in your home, for example, if your desire in your home is that Jesus Christ might have the first place in everything, you can be sure of God's power and support for your home or your assembly. If you desire that in everything in your assembly, Jesus Christ might have the first place, well, that's God's desire too, and you can be sure of having God's support in everything and in every aspect of the work and ministry of your assembly. And so we find this is the secret. If we align our desire with God's desire, that is, that Jesus Christ might have the first place in every area, we can be absolutely sure of God's support. It says further in verse 19, It was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in Him. What that means is, God's choice was that He wanted all of Himself to be in His Son. Everything, the entire nature of God, God wanted to be in His Son. The whole of the divine perfections and the divine nature in its fullness, should dwell in Jesus. And from Him, we receive of that divine nature. As the head supplies life to the body, from Christ, we partake of the divine nature. We could not have partaken of the divine nature if Jesus Christ had not come to the earth in our flesh. This is why in the Old Testament, no one could partake of God's nature. They could receive many blessings from God externally, but they could not inwardly, in their nature, partake of God's own nature. And this is the fantastic thing that is our privilege in the new covenant. Through the coming of Jesus Christ and through the coming of the Holy Spirit into our hearts, we can actually partake of God's own nature. But this has begun with the Father's good pleasure being that all his fullness should dwell in Christ. Verse 20, and it was also the Father's good pleasure that through Christ he should fully reconcile back to himself everything, having made peace through the blood of his cross, all things in earth and all things in heaven. So when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, it was the Father's desire that through that there should be peace between a world which had been alienated and separated from him because of sin, has been brought back to him through the blood of the cross. There's no other way for man to come back and to have peace with God except through the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary's cross more than 1950 years ago. Well, we can put it like this, like the Living Bible says, it was through His Son that God cleared a path for everything to come to Him. The path between us and God was blocked up. This was the significance of the veil that hung in the temple between the holy place and the most holy place into which no man could go. Now a path has been cleared. God has made a way by which all things can be reconciled back to Him. Peace through the blood of his cross, things on earth and things in heaven, can come back to God. And he refers that to the Christians in Colossae in verse 21. He says, although you were formerly separated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death. Paul never lost sight of the fact that every benefit we have as Christians 
was founded on the death of Christ. That is the foundation. We need to make this very clear. That the way in which the Christian faith differs from all other faiths is not in its moral code. It's not that we preach, don't tell lies, don't steal, don't kill, do good to others. All religions preach that. But that in Christ, in the Christian faith, we have this unique proclamation that God sent his son to die so that man might be reconciled back to God. There is absolutely no other way for man to be reconciled back to God except through the death of Christ. Through the blood of his cross, we have peace with God. And though we are separated from God by sin, we can be reconciled and come back to God because Jesus Christ has died for us and made that reconciliation, that peace between God and man.